Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christie. My name is Dr. Christie Reisinger, and today we're going to discuss the question, do I really need to wear a mask or face covering? Well, the short answer is yes. And I was slow to come to this conclusion, but now I've seen very convincing data and I want to say that I was wrong when I first came out with discussions on not wearing face masks. I'm going to go through the data that really helped convince me that face masks or face covering really work. Let's first talk about the two hairstylists in a Missouri hair salon. These two hairstylists had symptomatic COVID-19. However, they didn't know that they had COVID-19 and continued to go to work. Between the two of them, they saw 140 clients. But the interesting part of this is that they always wore a face mask and so did their clients. After it was found out that these two hairstylists had COVID-19, the health department contacted all of their clients. 46 of those clients ended up taking COVID-19 tests that came back negative and the others were called by the health department twice a day for 14 days, and none of them developed symptoms. This is truly remarkable, and it shows the power of face coverings since both the hairstylists and the clients always wore them. One of the reasons why I've changed my decision on face masks has to do with asymptomatic spread. When we first learned about COVID-19 back in March, we didn't really understand asymptomatic spread. However, we now think that about 30 to 40% of COVID-19 cases are actually asymptomatic, meaning that they never have symptoms, but they're able to pass COVID-19 on to others. This is why masks are so important. They help to protect others when you don't know you have COVID-19. And there is thought to be some benefit to wearing a face covering and helping to prevent the acquisition of COVID-19 as well. I also have two other studies that I'd like to discuss that have recently come out from very well-respected medical journals. The first is from the Journal of the American Medical Association. They conducted a study with Massachusetts General Brigham Hospital System. This healthcare system is located in Massachusetts and includes over 12 hospitals and 75,000 employees. In March of 2020, universal masking of all healthcare workers was required, and they also put masks on all patients that came into the hospital. What's interesting is that the healthcare workers had a significantly lower rate of positivity of COVID-19, while the state's positive rate of COVID-19 continued to increase. So during this study period, while the state's positivity rate continued to increase, the healthcare workers, while they were using masks, steadily declined. This study suggests a correlation between wearing masks and the rate of COVID-19 positivity. The next study was in the Lancet. This study looked at over 172 studies that included over 25,000 people. These were studies that looked at SARS, MERS, and COVID-19. The study included physical distancing and the use of masks. After analyzing all 172 studies, they determined that there was an 85% relative risk reduction with patients that were wearing masks from contracting SARS, MERS, or COVID-19. And lastly, this is not a study that was done in a medical journal, but was done by a large financial institution, Goldman Sachs. Their own independent analysis of the data showed that masks cut the rate of transmission by 25%. And they also predicted that cumulative cases would grow by 17.3% without a mask mandate, but only by 7% when a mask mandate was in place. Their analysis also stated that cumulative fatalities would grow by 29% without a mask mandate versus 16% with a mask mandate. In their final conclusion, I'll read here, expanding community masking by 15% could prevent the need to bring back stay-at-home orders that would otherwise cost an estimated 5% of gross domestic product or a projected cost of $1 trillion. So even if you're unsure about the medical benefit of wearing a mask, surely some of the Goldman Sachs data can help you with the financial benefit of wearing a mask. I also read a really wonderful article in the Gospel Coalition by Brett McCracken. And in that article, he really grieved the politicization of mask wearing. And I do too. 
Why does this have to be a political issue? Why does it have to be a fight between the Democrats and Republicans about wearing masks? As a believer, I consider it from a Christian point of view, and I believe my decision on masks is shaped more by my Christian identity than my political identity. I believe you should love your neighbor as yourself and that we should respect our authorities. I wish we would pause before rushing to criticize our leaders, taking a moment to realize that they're doing their best with the data that they have on hand. I truly don't believe that any scientific leader is intentionally lying to the public. We simply are receiving data at rapid speed and changes some of our recommendations. At the end of the day, the three reasons to wear a mask are because it reduces the number of new infections. Number two, because we all want stay at home orders and business closures to come to an end. We all want the economy to come back. And lastly, we should all be wearing masks because it's simply the right thing to do and we should be loving our neighbor as ourselves. In conclusion, the medical community got it wrong. We should have recommended masks or face coverings from the very beginning. We simply didn't know, but now we do. Let's all do better. I encourage everyone to wash your hands, stay physically distant from one another, and wear your mask. Thanks again for joining me.